Hello again, it's me. I'm going to try and move quite fast. Um, this is um, more of the ghost project. So we use a psychomantium um, to explore the nature and correlates of subjective apparitional experiences. Um, this is a brief history of um, psychomantium research. Essentially, the psychomantium is where people gaze into a shiny surface with the intention of experiencing um, a deceased loved one. Um, and in recent years, it was um, the method was developed by Moody, uh, but it's an ancient technique, and actually these techniques appear in most cultures, probably all cultures. Um, in parapsychology, we see that there is a recipe of intention, suggestion, and a hypnagogic-like state of consciousness. Um, there are um, exceptional experiences that are encouraged as a result of the procedure, including experiences of apparitions. Um, and Radin and Redmond found that um, these experiences that emerge may um, relate to anomalous interactions between the person and the environment. And so our work was really um, an extension um, of Radin's work, um, particularly focusing on synesthesia, um, because a lot of my recent work has looked at how synesthesia interplays with um, a range of exceptional experiences, particularly apparitions. Um, so we were looking to see whether synesthetes had more experiences um, than non-synesthetes, whether they um, had different um, intensities of experience. So where they had an exceptional experience, did they rate the experience more vivid, lifelike, and taking up space? Um, we were also looking to see whether um, exceptional experiences and their experiential qualities um, would correlate with the output of a random number generator kindly loaned by the Rhine Centre. Thank you, Rhine Centre. Um, measures of geomagnetism. Uh, we had a local EMF meter and we also took geomagnetism values um, from a US government website. Um, we um, also looked at heart rate variability that hasn't really been looked at um, in terms of its correlations with exceptional experiences. We looked at creativity and boundary thinness and also the qualitative nature of the psychomantium. I'm not really going to talk too much about that today. Um, so, um, moving quickly forward, we had 30 people um, 15 of whom reported a prior experience identified through our survey, and 15 had synesthetic tendencies. I'm having to say it that way because it's very hard to find people who are strong synesthetes. Um, but I did find some. Um, so I would say 10 out of my 15 are strong synesthetes, according to the synesthesia battery, and five um, have synesthetic tendencies and may well be strong synesthetes. Um, it's really, really hard to find them. Um, so we had, I'm just going to let you see that because I don't want to get distracted and not get to the main juicy things. So um, here's the measures. You can just look at those. Um, and we used, well, okay, I'll let you just look at those two. I'll talk about them. We had several things in the room. Um, here's our mirror. Um, I've just, I've sent pictures of this to Marilyn Schlitz, who's, who's uh, um, using this to help develop her, her current project with the Psychomandium, that's a virtual reality one. We've got an infrared camera at the back of the room there, um, and that films the area in front of the, um, the mirror. We have a timestamp, um, which is basically this uh, laptop, uh, sorry, the, um, the keyboard, and they'd send, they'd press a button if they had an experience that was an apparition or strong visual experience. And you can see electrodes there on the chair, um, that is for the heart rate variability equipment. That's the um, M-Wave system by HeartMath. Um, so essentially, people would sit in this chamber. Um, and this is a converted chamber from a previous BL project. It's a Faraday cage. Um, it's very small and cosy. We put black velvet curtains all around the room and on the ceiling as well. Um, so people were asked to, um, well, they, they, they took part in an, uh, an intention session before they went into the chamber. So they listened to music and attempted to bring somebody um, that they personally knew or a famous person they found meaningfully meaningful to them into their mind. Um, and they were given suggestions and art materials to help them do this. Um, they did this for 15 minutes. Um, then they were invited to enter the psychomantium chamber and they were asked to gaze at the tilted mirror that you just saw, um, keeping the person they wanted to experience on their mind um, but not forcing experiences. Um, we try to um, encourage people just to really um, pay attention in a sort of mindful way to what was happening during the time they were in there. 
Um, we collected um, HRV data, heart rate variability data. We monitored the chamber with an infrared camera, and we collected RNG data and monitored electromagnetism during the time they were in the psychomantium. Um, the previous slide that I jumped through also told you that we, were, we also collected baseline data for RNG um, and um, EMF, and we took a five-minute reading of the heart rate variability. So we had some comparisons there um, to see whether there are any changes between the baseline and the um, psychomantium. So after the session, um, people were interviewed, um, and that was um, recorded, and they completed a post-session questionnaire. And then we sent a follow-up questionnaire to see how they were doing, um, to see if they had any experiences after the session about a week later. Um, so in terms of experiences, um, 24 people had a presence, but this is where they, they decided afterwards they had a presence. Um, so it's like a post hoc decision. Um, in the session, 9 out of 15 synesthetes reported presences, whereas non-synesthetes, um, there were 8 out of 15. So it's really not that much different at all. Um, and synesthetes, therefore, did not report any more exceptional experience than non-synesthetes, which surprised me. Um, it, as well, they didn't rate their experiences any differently to non-synesthetes. Again, it surprised me. Um, creativity, however, correlated significantly with vividness and how real the experience was rated. On the right, you can see the themes that emerged um, in the um, psychomantium. Um, here's the juicy stuff. <laughs> oh, it's all juicy, but RNG output and experiential attributes, um, we found really interesting an interesting correlation between um, spatial quality and the output of the RNG. Um, and then when I um, looked at this between separately for the synesthetes and non-synesthetes, it was significant for the synesthesia group only, which I think is intriguing. So the extent to which the experience is taking up space or not is relating to um, the RNG output. Um, in terms of physical and physiological correlates of the experiences, um, again, we've got something interesting with the um, relationship between GMF and heart rate variability um, and um, EMF and heart rate variability. Um, and so, yeah, so that was significant. I think this is on the wrong slide, actually. Oh, no, the bit I'm looking at, sorry, I was jumping to the wrong bit. The interesting bit is the GMF and the spatial quality. Um, here, so we've got an interaction between a relationship between um, the level of GMF as rated with n local um, levels of nanote in nanotesla, and the extent to which the experience is rated as spatial. And then my, I did this again separately for synesthetes and non-synesthetes. It's significant for the synesthetes only. So the synesthetes are um, experiencing more of this correlation. So the GMF and the spatial quality of the experience, which I think is intriguing. Um, I know I've got about 30 seconds left, so here's the slide. Um, really interesting um, random number generator, deviations from randomness, um, correlated with the extent to which the experience was felt to take up space, particularly among synesthetes. It also correlated with the levels of geomagnetism, particularly among synesthetes. Um, and, um, you can see the other things there, but if real, these patterns may indicate in the psychomantium that ghost experiences are situated, co-created anomalies that emerge between the embodied experiencing person and the local and the non-local environment. And that's only a few seconds over. I'll stop there. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very much. Thanks to Bia.